Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Please be sure to connect with us online, facebook.com slash reading with your kids at Jed Lee Magic on Twitter and reading with your kids on Instagram. We have a fantastic show for you today. Our guests are Corey and Lee Lockhearty. They are the driving force behind the blog, The Tiny Activist. I really had a fantastic time speaking to Corey and Lee uh, 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 about their blog that celebrates diversity in children's literature. But as you quickly see, I had a terrible time remembering which voice was which. But I'm not going to forget to be at Navy Pier in Chicago November 23rd and 24th to be part of the Chicago Toy and Game Fair, the largest Toy and Game Fair in North America. We are really excited. The Reading with Your Kids podcast will be there. It's our next live event. Be sure to get down to Navy Pier to celebrate the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. And check this out. The folks at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair made this special offer. If you go to shytag.com, C-H-I-T-A-G.com, purchase your tickets using the promo code R-W-Y-K. That's our initials, reading with your kids. The promo code R-W-Y-K, you can save $3 per ticket. And you can buy as many tickets as you want. What a fantastic deal to be part of such a fantastic event. At our website, we're going to be having all sorts of books on display and on sale. We're also going to be uh, totally interactive. You can come in and find out what it's like to be part of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Even get uh, uh, your, yourself interviewed and recorded. Maybe we'll use you on the show, but we will absolutely email you the file. That, that'll be a great, great souvenir from the, from the show. You can also see the Reading With Your Kids Magic Show. It's all happening November 23rd and 24th, Navy Pier in Chicago, the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. I am really, really excited. Uh, Join us on the line right now from right outside of Boston, Massachusetts, very close to where our studios are in the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville. We have uh, a couple of, of bloggers. They have created a wonderful blog called The Tiny Activist. Please welcome to the show, Corey and Lee Lockhardy. Corey and Lee, how are you? Doing so well. Thank you. We're so happy to be here. I'm really happy to have you here. And that voice you first, I'm, I'm probably going to be wrong, that first voice was the voice of Corey. Am I right? You did it. Hey. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee is also with us. And why, Lee, why don't we start with you so we hear your voice. Tell us what was the inspiration uh, for to create the Tiny Activist? Sure. Um, well, to start out with, I always like to do this as like a setting. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I identify as non-binary. Um, so that is a huge piece of why we began this, um, to create kind of a, a holding space for, um, and making space for people who might not see themselves reflected always in mainstream children's literature. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we really were just so excited about the books that we were finding. We were searching out you know, bookstores where we could find something that, you know, was a little bit different from what we had seen before. Um, and eventually we said, we got to do something with this. We have like 60 books in our room and we should probably start organizing them. So we organized them into the website. That's- yeah. Something uh, that we also found was when you searched online, it was really easy to find a website that had, you know, the top 10 LGBTQ children's books, or it might be, you know, the top 10 uh, black female protagonist children's books, but there wasn't really a spot where you could find any of those intersection, uh, like intersections of different identities. And 
a whole bunch of different diverse books in one place. So that's what we try to do with our website is make it a resource for all sorts of um, identities and, uh, you know, teachers or um, caregivers that are looking for valuable resources to either use in the classroom or in their reading times. Now, I know in, in, in checking out the website and what you sent to me beforehand, you were talking about you creating this website for folks in marginalized communities. And, and I think that's wonderful, but I'm really excited about the Tiny Activist because I, I think it's a, a great resource for folks who are in, I guess, non-marginalized -mar uh, communities, folks, because I think it is, as, as important as it is for us, for, for, for people in different communities to see themselves represented in media, I think it's also really, really important and maybe more important for folks who are in quote unquote the mainstream to see folks from different communities, uh, represented in media so we can better get to know each other. Totally. Oh, definitely. 100% agree. And that actually is totally what um, one of our missions uh, in this website is to hew close to the windows and mirrors approach um, that Emily Stiles first came up with, um, which I actually have a quote because I was just so inspired by this. This is definitely something that, ins that instills um, a lot of the things that we do. Um, all children, all students deserve a curriculum which mirrors their own experience back to them upon occasion, thus validating it in the public world of the school. But curriculum must also insist upon the fresh air of windows into the experience of others who also need and deserve the public validation of the school curriculum. That's a powerful, powerful quote. Yeah. Yeah. Emily Files is great. She's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What has been, so, so one of the things I'm really impressed, uh, with at the Tiny Activist is that you are posting a, a lot of great content. You know, people always come up to me and they say, uh, gently, you, 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 you're, you know, publishing five episodes of your podcast every week. That's like, and incredible. And I, you know, you are right up there with me. You're, you're posting <laughs> almost you. every day. And, and that's, I think it's really important. I mean, there are just so many great books that everybody needs to know about. Um, I would definitely say we have, we post very regularly on Instagram, which has been an amazing source of community that we found, mm -hmm. um, being able to interact with some of our favorite authors and illustrators even, um, which has just been a delight. And then also get to know uh, maybe self-publishing authors and new and just starting out authors and illustrators, uh, which has also been really neat to see and sort of follow along with their process and the process of publishing a book. Corey, tell me, what? why do you think it's uh, – so important for us to um, talk about how our different communities intersect with each other. I think it's really important to talk about intersecting identities and specifically to allow marginalized communities to speak for themselves um, and to uplift other voices, because I think in a lot of places and a lot of schools, um, for many, many years, um, there's been a single narrative, and I think that that narrative is one of the majority and one that people would also call the oppressing my, uh, majority, and it's sort of diminished others' identities, it's diminished others' histories, um, and so I think it's important that all of these voices are brought up and allowed to tell their own stories. And I think in turn, uh, that makes education transformative for all parties involved, um, rather than transactional of people sitting in a room being told something and then regurgitating that something rather than having an educational experience that really makes them self reflect and opens up just a whole new 
new world and a whole new way of looking at situations. You know, Lee, one of the things that I really love about the tinyactivist.com is that it, 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 I, I hear from authors all the time when I say, what inspired you to do this? And, and they say, well, you know, I went to the bookstore and uh, I couldn't find any books that address X or Y or Z. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, and sometimes I have to hold hold my tongue because I'm like, well, we just had uh, half a dozen authors talking about that. Um, yeah. But but it it it's a great celebration of the fact that there really are um there, there may not be enough resources but there are an awful lot of resources that are existing that address uh, a lot of different issues and 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 talk and give voice to a lot of different communities. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely, completely. Um, we you know drawing off of what Corey was just talking about. Um, we have been able to find so many books that do honor that intersection, often within a single family. Um, we have one that's like a favorite of ours. It's called Yo Soy Muslim, and it's in Spanish, but it's about a family that happens to be on the intersection of Latinx identity and Muslim identity. And that is just a fantastic example of what there is out there that maybe people would not think that those two things could intersect, but there is just such a wide variety of experience that um, we really seek to honor and to, again, uplift um, because it's out there. It's just sometimes it can be hard to find it. So having a clearinghouse, a collection of those resources that are easy, easy to, to access and then have things to build off of them. Like we like to include questions that can help whoever's reading the book. Um, think about the critical, you know, self-reflective aspects of the book um, or, you know, jump off from there into an art project or, you know, into research into something different that kind of just offers a trampoline into, you know, other uh, experiences. You know, it's it's funny that that you mentioned Josoy Muslim because uh, I, that caught my eye as I was um, exploring the tinyactivist dot com because just this morning I was reading an article on the BBC about um, uh, the uh, Muslim populations, Muslim, Muslim communities in southern Mexico, mm-hmm. and oh, cool. yeah, it was a really really uh, neat. Uh, neat story about how some folks from Spain came over and started these communities and, and how this is growing in this, this part of Mexico. So, uh, I love when, you know, kind of the universe pr- presents these kind of, of, uh, <laughs> you know, coincidences. Yeah, it does it all the time. That's another thing that we, you know, we just kind of let ourselves be led as to what we're interested in. And that has not let us let us astray. We kind of just, you know, are, are interested in in finding new things and uh, you know things that resonate with us and that we think will resonate with others. Lee, you know, I mentioned earlier that there are a lot of authors who come on and they say, "Well, I looked for this and I couldn't find it." How are you able to find all of these wonderful, wonderful and and different books? Yeah, well, having an ear to the ground on Instagram is really, really fantastic that we've been able to create relationships with authors that are creating these specific stories about their experiences. Um, one of our favorites uh, is the author Aviva Brown. She just self-published um, a book called Ezra's Big Shabbat Question, um, and she writes from the experience of the intersection of black identity and Jewish identity. Um, so really Instagram has been huge, but also when Corey's mother went to Canada on vacation, we said, can you look for some books for us? But I need them to be in indigenous languages to that area or to Canada in general. So when she came back, she brought a whole bunch of books that were in Inuktitut and a variety of languages that we were able to then put on the website and say, look at these. They might not be available in the U.S. regularly, but they're out there. Um, so that's been, been kind of our task in, in asking people around us to help us in the journey as well. 
Now, are you folks set up? So I, mean, I love that you have these communities of folks who are referring uh, books to you. Are, are, are you also able to um, kind of accept uh, questions? Are people able to reach out to you and say, hey, I'm looking for a book that talks about this. And where can you can you point me in a direction? Yeah, that's what's really cool about the Internet is we oftentimes have people reaching out. And they might say something like, oh, I just had a son, but I really want to make sure that he is a feminist. Do you have, you know, any books or do you have any books um, for children and adults that talk about combating gender stereotypes um, and things like that? That's been something really neat um, that we've been able to use the Internet for, whether it be Instagram or people sending us messages on the website. Um, I would also say it's been really neat to follow some of um, the more indie publishers, and I find that they're uh, they're more interested. I won't say they're more interested, but they seem to have a higher publication rate of very meaningful literature rather than literature I feel that was developed, you know, for a wide audience. Um, you know, they're not republishing Dr. Seuss mm-hmm. for the 65th time. They're writing really cool books that have, like, non-binary characters, you know, just live in their day. But they're having – we're having these exposure to these characters that are so important and can be so reflective um, to young people. Well, you, you bring up an interesting point. We we are really proud that we've been able to give voice to a lot of indie authors and – and we really celebrate the, the fact that we're living in an age that it, it's publishing is much more accessible to to folks, and you don't have to have a uh, a huge uh, bank account to in, be an indie publisher anymore, and you don't need to water down your message so that it appeals to the highest number of people. If you really believe in something, uh, you can literally you know put write a book and, and get it uh, published in, you know, with, without any money, just, you know, going on Amazon and or Kindle, Kindle, Kindle Direct Publishing and, and publishing something as an ebook. Uh, talk uh, uh, from your point of view a, a little bit more about the, just the, this time in, in history and, and how cool that is. It's really amazing to, to tell a personal anecdote. We, uh, Corey's aunt, um, published, self-published a book um, that kind of dealt, it had all the family members in it um, and gave it as a present to all of the little cousins. So they had a book that had their own like names in them. And it was just the most adorable thing to see, you know, literature can be as intimate or as wide range as you want it to be. Um, I think that it's just, such an amazing time and it in the same way that I feel like cell phones and the um the ability to take photos it's such a game changer to make things accessible that you will get those kinds of in-depth stories from those moments because it doesn't mean that you have to be white and have an agent to get a book published these days you can publish a book and that means that so many people who would be pushed out or unable to publish have the accessibility and the ability to do it. So we get to hear so many more stories and it's so much more giving um, that, that we can really enjoy those experiences. Corey, we, we talk a lot here on the podcast about the importance of reading with our kids. That's what, what we're named, reading with your kids. And, you know, we, we talk about the benefits, of course, with our younger kids. It, it helps them develop vocabulary and helps them become readers. And, and it's important, I believe, for us to, t- you know, read with our kids as they get older to really help instill that love of learning and that love of reading. From your point of view, how important is it for families to read these type of books, the, the books that you are highlighting on your website together? I I think that it's crucial. 
Um, not only does it do all of those fantastic things that you previously mentioned, but it also helps with things like social emotional development and having that family reading time. Uh, reading these books can sort of bring a situation to the table that can then be talked about mm -hmm. and it can develop those critical thinking skills about, you know, tricky situations that do come up. And when you're a kid and being able to reflect back and think about all of the different um, storylines that you might have talked about, and it really helps develop media literacy, too, um, and gives sort of children and their caregivers some time to be together to talk about, oh, well, that character said that. How would you really feel if somebody said that to you? Or what if somebody stood up for you that way? And it helps really with that self-reflection and gives them the tools to be able to be that person that stands up for their friend one day. Um, yeah, I, I really, I really love that. And uh, especially that, that whole idea of, of, of talking about standing up for others. Um, you know, I've, I've been presenting educational magic shows for decades and, and the last 20 years, the most popular or the most in demand programs, uh, of mine are, are the ones that address issues of bullying and, and all the research I've done and all mm -hmm. of the presentations I've made, literally, uh, thousands of presentations and, and spent thousands of hours, um, studying the issue. The one thing that's very clear that, you know, if you want your kids to be in a safe and caring, bully-free learning environment, one of the things we have to help our kids do is to to stand up for each other and to give our kids the strength and, and the permission uh, to stand up and, and to help anybody they see being hurt or left out or, or and excluded. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that right now, what we see on a national stage is a lack of empathy. Um, and I think that empathy and compassion are such crucial parts of being a human that if you don't have that basis, it can be very challenging to interact with others. Um, having that empathy and understanding of really walking in someone else's shoes either through a book or through talking to a person who's had an, a specific experience um, is just so important to lead people to understand others versus othering someone who may have, you know, feelings in common with you, may have thoughts in common with you, may have things that they love that you love. And it enables people through these books to think about someone else the same way they think about themselves and it can develop that empathy and that critical thinking of like, we don't just take this at face value. We're going to investigate it and we're going to ask questions and we're going to think about it. Um, but it can bring up those big questions in a way that's very low key. So children don't, you know, we know as former, uh, teachers and educators that if you make a big deal, kids will be like, Oh no, 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 no. I can tell that you're, you're being serious. I'm going to, I'm going to walk away. But with, uh, with children to bring up these conversations around a book is a very safe kind of exploration that can bring up those questions that, you know, out of the blue might be harder to talk about. You know, you, you mentioned some things being hard to talk about and I I'll, I'll want both of you to kind of talk uh, uh, about this. As I'm listening, I know that there are, are as I'm, I'm speaking to you, I know that there are people out there who are listening who may be saying, yeah, I get that, but wow, you know, I grew up in a really different time and I kind of thought this and uh, I don't, you know, this would, this would be really hard for me as a parent to, to talk to my kids about, talk about what, about the value of, of, uh, for a parent to just kind of admit to that, to say, Hey, I, 
this is this is different for me. This is foreign for me, and 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 this is a little bit uncomfortable. But I'm willing to sit down and and read this with you and talk about with this with you because more than anything else, I want you to understand that we need to be respectful of all people. Oh, absolutely, and I think that a lot of parents and a lot of teachers. They're hesitant because they don't want to say the wrong thing. They're hesitant because they don't want to admit that they don't know or maybe need a little bit more time to learn um, about how to respond. Uh, I think that there's a lot of pressure on parents, uh, particularly mothers that work. Mm. Um, if we want to bring in, you know, the idea of the second shift, um, where not only does a woman that work work, as if she doesn't have children, but then she comes home and has to be a mother mm -hmm. like she doesn't have a job, mm -hmm. um, which I think is also why the Internet is so great with the parenting groups um, that are available right now. And it's sort of a safe space for parents and caregivers to be able to talk and trade ideas um, and sort of admit that they're not perfect and, you know, that they do have faults, which is difficult for people to generally admit. Um, and whew. I think the authenticity <laughs> of it, um, children really appreciate that. And that helps to uh, help them understand you and themselves as like, oh, this adult doesn't know. So it's okay if I don't know, but we'll find it together. Um, you know, emphasizing that it's a journey and you're never going to know everything literally until you die. You're not going to know everything. You're going to learn something new every day. And that's why life is so exciting. That's mm -hmm. why books are so exciting because mm -hmm. you can explore and you're not going to know the answers, but maybe we can talk about it and we can see, let's find the answers together. You know, we can talk about it. We might be wrong, but we also could figure it out. Mm -hmm. I found great moments of camaraderie and uh, real experiences with, with children in saying, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, can you help me? What do you think? Asking those kinds of, um, you know, questions and really listening to what children say and kind of echoing that back to them is such a powerful thing in a child's life because they're being told so many things all the time that to listen is revolutionary. Boy, oh boy. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, Share with any time uh, a, a young a parent of young kids a ask me, you know, ad advice on parenting. I, I tell them the most liberating thing you can do for yourself as a parent is to ad admit that I don't know, because mm -hmm. it is so hard to stay up on that pedestal of I know everything. <laughs> it's oh yeah, <laughs> it's impossible. Now I'm going to ask you both um, uh, an unfair question, and I apologize, but it's. It's not like I'm asking an author for their favorite favorite book of you know the ones that they wrote. But what I'd love to do is to ask both Lee and Corey to tell us their favorite books. If I was visiting the tiny activist dot com for the first time, which books would each of you say I should check out first? Well, I'll go first because my absolute favorite. Um, is From the Stars in the Sky to the Fish in the Sea. It is a beautiful book uh, written by Kai Cheng Tom, who is a trans woman of Asian American experience, uh, Asian Canadian, sorry. Um, and it's illustrated by Wayant Li and Kai Yun Ching. Uh, it, I first read it in a bookstore in Canada, and I had no idea that I was non-binary. It was not a thought in my mind. And somehow the way that the author speaks about this character who is not gendered in the book, um, who kind of takes on a whole lot of different animal uh, identities and experiences, um, comes back home after not being understood at school and has a mother there who says, I will love you no matter what, no matter who you are that day, no matter what you look like will love you. And that made me just fully openly cry in this bookstore <laughs> in a city that I don't live in. Uh, and I knew that I had to buy it. And 
I knew that it was something important, even if it didn't, it took me like a whole six months later to come out as non-binary, but it, it kind of awoke something in me that I didn't even know. Existed. And that's really what a fantastic book that's a mirror can do. Well, the only place I cry is are, are in cities that I don't live in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that's a great example. Um, you know, I imagine there there are some folks who are listening who, uh, who say, "I I don't truly me n- understand what you mean by being non-binary," and um, and, and the point of this podcast isn't to explain that. But I think. That reading that story, that parent who's sitting there saying, I don't know what, what this thing means, but sitting down and reading this book that says to a child, to says to their child, Hey, I, I might not get it, but I don't care because I'm going to love you no matter what. You are mine and I will always be here for you. Yeah. It's that openness and authenticity we were talking about. It, it, it can work wonders. So that was, uh, that was, um, Corey's favorite book, right? It was Lee. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, I don't get this voice <laughs> thing so much. So what is Corey? Very similar sounding. It's true. You are very similar sounding. What is Corey's favorite book? Okay. I'm going to try to run through a few real quick because <laughs> right. I know we're getting to time here. Um, that just recently came out was Not Quite Snow White by Ashley Franklin and illustrated by Ebony Glenn. Incredible book. Um, there's another book called I Will Be Fierce, and that's written by Bea Birdsong and Nidhi Chanani. And another incredible book. Um, and for a little bit older of an age group, there's a really great book called Rebel Voices, which traces um, women's suffrage around the globe and tells the story of um, the activists that were behind uh, getting voting rights. And that one is really great too. Awesome. I, we, I've mentioned the, the, the name of the website many times, but just remind folks where they can go to connect with you online. Sure. Our blog slash website is www.thetinyactivist.com. Um, on Instagram, our handle is at the tiny activists. It's plural. On plural. Instagram. Somebody already had it. <laughs> <laughs> we're sure they're great too. Yes. And then on Facebook, we're the tiny activist. We have had uh, a, a true pleasure speaking to uh, the driving forces behind the tinyactivist.com. Corey and Lee Lockhardy. Corey and Lee, thank you so much for being part of our show tonight. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. It was a joy talking with you. It really was. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with the Kids podcast. Our guest will be Sam Wills. He will be here to talk to us about a fantastic fan financial literacy program he calls Wing a Dudes. That's the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to have you as a guest on the show. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the chance to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the contact button, let us know about your great book. We will let you know the next easy steps. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very, very wonderful. I want to thank Corey and Lee Lockhardy. Be sure to check out the Tiny Activist, a fantastic blog. And, and our guests were absolutely fantastic and, and so kind to me when I was messing up who I was talking to. I was so embarrassed. We also want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all of the work that she does here on the podcast. Be sure to check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all of the support that she gives me. And we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. 